guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, I have a long-awaited guest. It's none other than Bat Ivko. He's going to be playing this deck, which I've never shared on the channel. It's a hybrid between P.E.K.K.A. Control and P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam. Instead of the Miner, it has the Battle Ram. Let's take a look at the Bulgarian Pro. Shout out to, by the way, to Bulgarian Gang, his clan. He's currently 81st in the world, over 6,400 trophies, and he's not actually using this deck. This is just a deck for show. But you know what, guys? i got to reset my device because he's going to be playing some la live ladder and I always forget to do this really unprofessional of me I apologize but this is the glitch in super in, in, in supercell this is the glitch on supercell in clash royale where I'm not able to spectate unless I reload my device anyway guys let's see if he's into a match and indeed he is let's spectate here he is oh about 40 35 seconds in my apologies it looks like from the cards played here that he probably uh went in for a band they countered with bats and then they attacked with a miner and then he went in with the battle ram and the royal ghost so the one thing i want to kind of set the table here guys before we get into the play-by-play -play, hopefully in the final minute of this match is i've noticed watching a bunch of his live matches before pressing record as he was trophy climbing to where he is right now that he plays this deck more like bridge spam in most matchups than like a, a traditional P.E.K.K.A. minor control deck. So even though a lot of the cards are similar, you're actually going to be playing this deck a lot differently. I would advise people who like Bridge Spam, that kind of pressure archetype where you set the pace, I think you guys will have more success than with a traditional control player who likes to really let the opponent dictate the tempo and then counter push from there. And you can see already here just how aggressive Bat Ivko is here. I think I already gave a shout out, maybe I didn't, but he wanted to give a big shout out to Bulgarian Gang, his uh, his clan. And, and by the way, guys, long time coming for this guest. It took me a couple weeks, but I finally got him on. I think I showed him beating somebody else in another live ladder video. And I said, I really want him in, on, and a bunch of you guys actually reached out to me. Uh, shout out to Alex, who was one of the guys, uh, a, a longtime subscriber, who helped connect me with uh, Bat Ifco. So now we have, uh, okay, Zap takes care of those bats there. And we're going to put the pressure on with a Battle Ram, a Poison, and a Royal Ghost here. That should take care of the Minion Horde as well as the Cannon Cart. That was, I mean, think about it. That was a 10 Elixir uh, defense from the opponent. Even though we invested a lot, too, we do get some tower damage as well. We have some spare goblins on our left tower. We're going to go ahead and e-whiz. Things are looking good here with about 30 seconds left. We'll talk more about deck tips and, and the pacing and the timing with this deck in the rest of the video as well, guys. So Bandit's going to go down. And, and one thing I can already tell you about this deck is starting play is, is pretty important. And I've noticed that he goes in with a Royal Ghost at the bridge, a Bandit at the bridge, or even a Battle Ram behind the King Tower as his first play to kind of figure out what cards the opponent has, what counters the opponent has early on. By the way, guys, we have a match here. 855 on his left tower because of that minor chip damage. And then the Zap is ready with that Bandit. Could this be? Ooh, that was so close on those Spear Goblins. And that's exactly illustrating what I was talking about there, guys, in that last push. He's not going to be sending in the Bandit without the Zap at the ready because he knows the opponent has Swarm. So here it goes. And Ewiz against that uh, Miner, he does with the Fireball to get that tower down to 465. But his Royal Ghost on that left tower takes it down to 798 damage. A Royal Ghost unchecked against the tower can do an incredible amount of damage. And look at that big push here. It's a Cannon Car and a Goblin Gang. Finally plays the P.E.K.K.A. for the first time in the match, guys. And it was a great time to do so. So, Zap goes down against that minion horde. Bar Barrel comes down, and let's see what happens here. A miner comes in. Gotta be careful. Fireball comes in. E Wiz, and oh, I wasn't even looking at the left tower. With 79 HP left on his left tower, the Royal Ghost seals the deal there on that left tower with more HP. Guys, I'm gonna edit out. All right, guys, we are into the next match. Here we go. He is going against uh, Korean guy, I guess. And uh, let's see, let's see what he has in store for his first play here. So as I told you, he's usually pretty aggressive on his first play, and it's going to be a Royal Ghost behind the King Tower here, and the opponent responds with a Miner behind their King Tower. So who is to say what deck they're playing, starting out with a Miner? It could be anything. Miner, of course, one of the most versatile win conditions in the game. Uh, so I'm recording this very, very early in the morning, and it's something that really funny. I was actually chatting with a, a friend of mine, Trader Dan, who also a big Clash Royale player, and he said that he noticed 
that if he plays early in the morning United States time, he notices it's easier to push than it is late at night. And it's funny he said that because it seems incredibly anecdotal, but I found the same thing. I found the same thing that if I push in the morning, it's much easier and at night I'm way more likely to tilt. Again, it's probably just confirmation bias, but have you guys noticed that? That it's easier or more difficult to push at a certain time of day? Either way, guys, we're going against the Double Dragon deck, which I shared on the channel, played live by QW, the Romanian pro, about four or five videos ago. I'll link it if you're curious, but this is definitely the Double Dragon deck being played by the opponent and they connect for a ton of damage on our right tower, definitely not the star that Bat Ivko wanted here in this match. And he takes the hit from the Mega Minion. So this is gonna be a big comeback, hopefully here, or it's gonna be our first loss of the video. So they reset with the Tombstone. He responds with a Bandit, trying to get that Tombstone out of there so we can play the Battle Ram, I imagine. Instead, he goes with a P.E.K.K.A. in the left lane, and the opponent responds with a Lava Hound. So this should be interesting to watch how he handles a, a it's not Lava Loon, but a Lava Double Dragon, because they do have the Inferno Dragon, and there it is. We get the Royal Ghost to the right tower, and we keep the pressure up with a Battle Ram opposite lane. Where's that E-Wiz? There it is! E-Wiz down, perfectly timed. He delayed that E-Wiz so the Inferno Dragon would get as close to the bridge as possible there in the left. And Pekka gets to the tower. Two swings! Make it three swings! Tower down! Oh my god, this match looks from went from looking really really bad to all of a sudden he might have this with about 33 32 31 seconds left here in this match it's really anybody's game if he can defend here he might have this victory in the bag. He gets the Royal Ghost to that right tower. Gets a ton of damage on the right tower. He might, there it is, Bandit in the pocket. That's gonna take the tower down. That's it, that's GG for Bat Ivko. A nice come from behind victory here. 10 seconds left still, guys. But he says good game, well played. He can just spam units there to distract the Baby Dragon, the Inferno Dragon, whatever he can. Obviously, Lava Hound's not going to do enough damage on her own there on the Princess Tower. That's going to be GG. A quick 2-0. and oh. Let's hop into match number 3, but first, again, check to see where he is in the overall global standings on the leaderboard. So really, really tremendous comeback there in that second match. So let's see, where is he right now? He is still, still 50, wasn't he just at 59? Wait a second here. Let me, sometimes it takes a while to, to reset. Let me go back. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. So we're 26th right now at a 6 5 4 6. Let's see if he can win this next one. All right. Here we go. Match number three, guys. Time to see if he can get three in a row here and creep into the top 20 global. And here it goes. A bar barrel starting out by the opponent. Obviously, that could mean anything right now where bar barrel has become one of the strongest spells in the game to the surprise of, of pretty much everybody. But hey, you buff the card enough times. Of course, it's eventually going to become viable. So a furnace a bar barrel and ewiz and guards being played by the opponent i'm guessing it's a royal giant deck maybe it's crazy you don't even think royal giant i was thinking like lava hound or something crazy like that uh maybe a pekka deck but then you think about it and you're like yeah royal giant's actually viable in top uh top 50 ladder top 100 ladder and i think this is the royal giant deck so let's see i think that bat ivko has a great matchup against it though because uh we of course do have the pekka and we'll be saving pekka for the royal giant uh you better believe it so we do get one barbarian to that left tower he was doing his thing trying to kind of stymie that inferno dragon we don't have the elixir on this push for the royal ghost so we're just zapping we're trying to take care of that Inferno Dragon. We do. That was really important that that E-Wiz, with just a sliver of health, was able to survive. Look at all the value we've gotten out of this E-Wiz before he dies finally to the Baby Dragon there. But I do want to say that, well, Elixir's probably somewhat even here, but a good defensive sekwence there for Bat Ivko. He didn't even use the P.E.K.K.A., and he also has the tower uh, damage advantage here in this match with about 15 seconds left in regulation. So the opponent's given the hmm face, and he drops down that poison on the furnace definitely a good poison value situation whenever you see the furnace i would definitely use poison unless they're trying to bait it out which this deck isn't necessarily trying to do so we go with the royal ghost here 
They're going to respond with an E-Wiz and an Inferno Dragon. Royal Ghost will finish off that uh, Furnace there. And then he'll appear. We have enough Elixir for the P.E.K.K.A. Here he comes. Oh, excuse me, P.E.K.K.A. Here she comes. P.E.K.K.A.'s going to go ahead and take down, chop down that Royal Giant, holding him to only one hit. Oh, look at that beautiful Zap to retarget that Inferno Dragon away from the P.E.K.K.A. Now, that was a pro play there, guys. Did you see that? We have the E-Wiz placed on the other side of the Inferno Dragon. But then at the very last second, before that Inferno Dragon, was about to really charge up there. Boom! Zap comes down, retargets onto the minions, and that keeps that P.E.K.K.A. alive for, for, for a brief moment at least. But we get to the tower there with the bandit, and there we go again with the pacing. And this is one of the big takeaways again with this deck, guys, at the risk of kind of belaboring the point here. It's saving the card that you need. Most of the time, that's going to be the P.E.K.K.A., given the matchup against Beatdown, of course. Uh, not going super aggressive for no reason, but again, if I can break and, and the bandit, uh, bandit connects on the tower. Whenever I try to get into uh, kind of like the philosophy of this deck, he goes ahead and he scores the tower down. So let's go ahead and hop to the next match, and then we'll talk about kind of the pacing of this deck. All right, guys, we are into the next match, and let's talk about pacing this time, huh, guys? So what you're going to see him do oftentimes is start out with a solo battle ramp. A solo bandit or a solo royal ghost identify what the opponent has to counter and then what he's gonna do is later on in the match he's just gonna notice what counters they have what distraction units they have and then he's gonna combo his cards appropriately or at least make sure he has what he needs in hand now what do I mean by that for example if he has if his opponent has a Skarmie or if his opponent has a goblin gang for example He's not going to go in with a solo bandit unless he has Zap in hand to take care of it. He's not going to go in with a battle ram unless he has Royal Ghost to place ahead of it to kill all the swarm cards. It's just little combinations like that. He's not going to go in with a battle ram against a minion horde unless he has poison, you know? So just having an awareness of what cards you need to combo with your bridge spam cards or with your defending P.E.K.K.A. are going to be very important elements. You're really not going to be playing the P.E.K.K.A. in this deck unless it's for a reason against a beatdown card such as even a lava hound as we saw same lane in the first match there that would be an appropriate situation but in some matchups you won't even be using the pekka so there may be some matches where you don't even play the pekka at all and here we go about halfway almost through this match and it looks like another royal giant deck guys i think here comes the P.E.K.K.A. here, trying to clog up the lane, actually doing exactly what I said he's not going to be doing, right? But in some situations, you need a big body to tank, and you don't have, you know, the cycle to properly defend otherwise. So, of course, if you have two, a Baby Dragon, Inferno Dragon, and a bunch of other crap coming down the lane, of course, you can use the P.E.K.K.A. in that situation as well, especially if you anticipate them playing a Royal Giant, which he probably did there. So, there's always exceptions for every rule, right? So, here he goes with the Royal Ghost, uh, defending against the guards gonna go down being comboed with the battle ram here in the left lane baby dragon coming but we do connect with that battle ram on the left tower that was a really valuable connection but now we have this annoying baby dragon actually flying in front of the uh the barbarian there we're gonna combo and redirect that baby dragon using the bandit bandit does get a charge onto that furnace taking it around half hp the poison will finish it off there so this is looking really good early on here with about 30 seconds left in this match or so. And here's the first Royal Giant. So here's the P.E.K.K.A. for us. Do we have Zap in hand? It, but the P.E.K.K.A. actually gets pushed away from the Inferno Dragon. That was really good. We also have the E-Wiz in hand. So we have E-Wiz placed and we do connect with the Battle Ram. Poison coming down for the guards. P.E.K.K.A. will be killed by the Inferno Dragon, but it doesn't matter. We get another connection there with that Battle Ram on the left tower. And again, Bandit aggressively played right into that Furnace, getting a charge on the Furnace instead of on the Fire Spirits spawned by it. So here it goes. Hey, the opponent's switching lane. Things aren't working out in the left lane. They haven't really gotten any damage to either of the towers for the most part. A few hundred HP off of that left tower and the right tower at this point after one hit on that uh, that tower by the Royal Giant. But things are looking really good. A Royal Ghost on the tower is a quick, quick, another victory. Man, that Ivko came to play today. Let's see if he wants to keep going here, guys. All right, guys, we are in. He agreed to do one more battle, so it's against Matt G here. I want to say that Matt G usually runs Lava Loon. 
So Ash, what about Lava Loon? Well, I covered Lava Double Dragon. Let's see if we can make it five in a row. We'll check to see what place he's in after this match here, guys. I want to say, I forgot to look after the last one, but he must be like top, uh, creeping up on top 10 right now with his four match win streak so far this video. And I, it looks like I was right there. Matt G, of course, a really good Lava Loon player. Let's see how Bat plays this one out here. So he has the Lava Hound coming in the left lane. He attacks really aggressively with the Battle Ram as well. It looks like it's going to be a tower trade scenario here. He has E-Wiz in hand as well. Probably wants to see a spell from the opponent, but he opts to actually use Poison there on offense. I think he would have had the tower either way, so maybe he's going for the three crown attempt. Uh, they respond with guards, and he gives the good game. Ooh, and the E-Wiz goes the other way instead of defending. Uh-oh. Not looking good here this time. Zap coming to try to get one more hit with that balloon from the opponent, that is. And a bandit coming to kind of distract here. So he's going to need the minions down like now. He doesn't have the elixir. Now! Oh no! That was a really fast GG. And thus ends the win streak, guys. I probably should have told him to just stop while he was ahead. He was probably top 10 in the world. Let's see where he is right now. Oof, that, that hurt. Lava Loon. What about Lava Loon? Well, I got you covered, but uh, again, I want to show losses too, so that kind of sucked. Let's go ahead and check in. And he says, OMG, I seriously hate those Lava counters let's check to see where he is right now so he's currently 18th in the world so not bad when all said and done consider it considering he started the video at around 80 but guys that's gonna do it for the video today i hope you enjoyed this series such a pleasure to finally get bat ivko on the channel such a good player i'm sure you guys agree best of luck with the deck the deck link will always be in the description below guys as well as the player stats and profile for bat ivko thanks to statsreal.com a sponsor here on the channel as well as Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, take care, guys.